This is 10.2, determining in behavior and intercepts to graph a polynomial function. Now, it's much easier to graph on paper than it is to graph in the computer. Um, so I always suggest everyone do it on their paper first and then just make sure whatever you're clicking on in the computer that it matches what you had on paper, okay? Also, you wanna get into the habit of graphing on paper because when you turn in your test for your midterm or your final, um, you do have to write your stuff on paper in case the computer counts you wrong, right? So it's helpful if I see that on your paper you did it, but you didn't know how to enter it in the computer, you can still get some partial credit, right? So for this one, first thing, we have really four things that we're gonna be doing to graph this, okay? So the first thing is determining the end behavior. So I do have a negative one in front, and I am supposed to take that negative one and multiply it by x to the power one, and multiply that by x to the power two, and multiply that by x to the power two. And this will help me get the leading term. So it turns out to be negative one x to the fifth, which is a negative x to the odd type, which means it will have this kind of behavior. Okay, I just need to note that. I don't need to write the falls or rises to the left and falls to the right thing. I just need to keep this in my mind. Okay, now the next thing is, is I need to find the zeros where the graph crosses the x-axis. Now remember, it only crosses, or not remember, but I'm letting you know that it will cross the x-axis when the multiplicity is equal to one. Okay, so when does it cross? it crosses when the multiplicity equals one. When does it touch or bounce off of the x-intercept? That happens when the multiplicity equals two. So basically they're asking us for the x values of the zeros or the x-intercepts have the multiplicity of one. I only have one factor here that has a multiplicity of one. So that factor is going to, if I solve this, set it equal to zero and solve it, that factor is going to give me the zero or the x-intercept of two. So that's going to be what I put in there, okay? And I think here you, I think you do have to type in the falls and all that stuff. So this one is rises to the left and falls to the right, just in case you have to select that from a drop down arrow. Now let's continue with the rest of it. So if I want to find the x zeros or x intercepts where the graph touches, I'm going to be looking at the two factors that have the two multiplicity. So when I set this one equal to zero, I get the value negative one. And when I set this factor equal to zero, I get the x value equal to positive one. Now the y-intercept you get by plugging in zero. So if I plug in zero into the function that was given to me, I get negative times negative two times positive one squared times negative one squared, which is negative times negative two times positive one times positive one and then if I multiply from left to right, these two give me a positive two, these two give me a positive two, and then these two give me a positive two. So the y-intercept is a positive two. And then it says plot all intercepts, and select the behavior at each x-intercept, and then click on the graph icon, okay? So you're not gonna be able to select the end behavior yet, until you already know what it's supposed to look like. So I highly suggest you graph it on your paper before trying to pick these things in the computer, okay? So essentially what it wants you to do is it wants you to plot your um, values. So it wants me to plot these, these x-intercepts, there's three of them, and this y-intercept. Now when I plot the y-intercept, it's not gonna ask me anything extra, okay? It's just gonna um, let me plot it, okay? But when I try to plot the zeros or the x-intercepts, it is going to ask me what the end behavior needs to be, okay? So what I suggest you do 
is you plot it first in your paper and then answer in the computer. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to graph the x-intercept 2, the x-intercept negative 1, and the x-intercept 1. So when I'm graphing on paper, so on paper, I am putting all the intercepts. Then the second thing I'm going to do is apply in behavior. And then I'm going to apply behavior at zeros. Okay, that's the order I'm going to do it on paper. The order is different when I do it in Alex. Okay, so plotted all of my values. Now the next thing I'm going to do is apply the in behavior. In behavior is supposed to rise to the left and fall to the right. So this is the furthest left x value. I'm going to rise to the left and on this is the furthest right x value. I'm going to fall to the right. And then of course this stuff is going to connect. But how? At negative 1, my x-intercept is supposed to touch which means it cannot go through there, it's just gonna go back up, okay? And then at some point I'm gonna have to go through this, uh, and then at some point I'm gonna have to come back down. Now I don't know how high up I come go before I come back down or any of that information, but that's okay, because Alex will graph the function for us. We just need to know what's happening at the zeros. Here, I know that <clears throat> at 1, I'm supposed to touch as well. So I'm going to come down to this, but then I can't go through it. I have to go back up. And I don't know how high up I'm going to go, but I know at some point I got to turn because I got to come back down to this guy. And I know that at 2, it's supposed to cross, which means when I do come back down, it is going to go straight through that x intercept. Okay? Now, the reason you have to do this first is because even though you know that it's touching, at negative one, you wouldn't know whether to select this kind of touching from below the x-axis or this kind of touching above the x-axis until you already knew the in behavior and kind of had already mapped it all out, okay? So in Alex, now that you have everything, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna plot the y-intercept and it will let you do that with no problem. Then for each x-intercept, you're going to plot and select behavior. You have to do them both at the same time. And then the last thing you hit is that graph button. Okay, and it'll do all the little curves for you, the rest of it. So essentially what's going to happen in your computer is you're going to, so I already know what it's gonna look like, right? I have that in my mind. I'm just gonna show you what it looks like in Alex, okay? So in Alex, you're gonna plot the y-intercept first, okay? And it's not gonna give you a hard time about that one, it's just gonna let you plot it, okay? Then, you're gonna start with your x-intercept. So when I go to enter in two, I know that it has to go through that. Now because I had already drawn the image, I know that it goes this way. It comes from the top and it goes downward, okay? It does not do this one. And I wouldn't have known that unless I had already done all of these things on my paper. So in Alex, when I put the dot at two, it's, I need to select this kind of behavior so that it'll do like a little mark like this on my paper. That's all it'll show me. Okay, then um, I'm gonna go to the next one, negative one. Negative one is over here. As soon as I click on that, it's gonna ask me which be in behavior. We already know that it needs to go upward like that. So we already know it needs to look like this because of what we had on our paper before. And then when we go to plot one, we also know that that one needs to be the same behavior as the first one. Again, because we already did it before. 
Once you have all of your x-intercepts in and your y-intercept, you click on the graph function and it will draw the rest of the graph for you, okay? It will draw all the rest of it. So you don't have to worry about that. You just have to select y-intercept first, plot that, and then as you plot each x-intercept, you're gonna have to tell them which, in behavior, which behavior it should be, okay? And you can't just guess because it's a 50-50 shot on which one it's going to be. You really have to know by having drawn it before already on your paper.